And all right, welcome back for uh, day five. If this was a, uh, if we were doing a sports metaphor, I guess would be uh, rounding the last turn heading for home, right? <laughs> so uh, in honor of this Sunday's uh, celebration of World Marriage Day, our speakers tonight are here to talk about the married life vocation or being uh, in a marriage. Uh, Sunday also happens to be Valentine's Day and it'll be the 42nd Valentine's Day I spend with my wife, Debbie, uh, 39th as husband and wife. So we knew each other a few years before that. So uh, tonight's speakers are uh, Jen and John Worley and they're from the Our Lady of Joy end of our parish grouping. And um, they've been married nine years and uh, when Jen completed her uh, RCIA program last spring, uh, they then got married in the church. So I guess we're welcoming newlyweds, uh, less than one year married in the church. So <laughs> before we get uh, started and get to hear your story, uh, John, would you uh, mind saying the uh, opening prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, help those who are married to be patient and kind with one another and their children. Help them to avoid jealousy, selfish interest, or ill tempers. Help them to rejoice in the truth, bearing all things, believing all things, hoping all things, and enduring all things together. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Um... So did you guys want to give a brief introduction or did you just want to jump into the uh, questions that we had uh, looked at previously? Do you want to do the introduction? I think we're going to kind of turn our first question into our introduction. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. All right. So do you want me to ask you, how did you meet and how did you know uh, you wanted to get married? Sure. sure. <laughs> we Go met um, 13 years ago. Um, actually at Jennifer's sister's wedding. That's the first time I was, uh, I met Jennifer. I was friends with her sister. Her sister married my, one of my best friends and, um, Jen lived out of state then. So just from talking at the wedding and stuff, every time Jen would come up, um, to Pittsburgh, uh, we'd all hang out as friends and, and Jen and I became good friends, uh, first. And, um, after she, go ahead, you want to take over? So I was actually married when we were friends and I ended up getting divorced um, and moved back home to Pittsburgh. And um, after that is when John and I started dating. Um, I have two children to my first marriage. Um, I have my notes here. <laughs> so, and, go ahead. And, um, just for the second part of the question, how did we know? Um, it was uh, really quickly. Um, we were only dating a couple months when uh, I had already kind of had it in my mind that I uh, I love Jen, and it was a feeling like I never had before. And um, you know, with a little bit of prayer and uh, you know, thinking about it for the short amount of time I did, I I proposed to Jen about seven months after we started dating. All right. We, we both were, we both dated each other. Like it wasn't like a casual fling. I mean, we were both in our like mid to late twenties. And I think both of us like had the intentions of like, this wasn't just dating around. Like we were, we were dating like with intentions, like courting each other to be serious. Mm -hmm. So that's good. You, uh, you made that realization quickly. It seems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So what do you find are the best parts of uh, being married and what are the most challenging parts of, you know, uh, I was uh, going to say with all the other vocations, you're, you're dealing with your relationship with God primarily here, you're throwing in another person. So it does, it does make it uh, more challenging at times, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely more challenging. Um, some of the best parts though, I mean, when Jen and I both agree, or, um, you always have that person to celebrate your victories, you know, little things that you're doing right with, you know, your kids or, or, or whatever. And you also have someone there 
and your failures. You know, you never fail alone anymore. And uh, you can embrace and, and work with your partner to, to figure out, you know, how to not fail again or, or do better as a parent, husband or wife. Um, I, I, uh, I wrote down, you have a forever hype man, which means like, like he's my best friend and I'm his best friend. And we always have each other to like, you know, be excited about, you know, a new job or, you know, Hey, I think I want to do this. And like, they're like, yeah, you know, like he's my biggest fan. I'm his biggest fan. So like, that's really cool. Um, so we build each other up and that's really important, important in a relationship. You know, you have to, you have to build up your spouse to, to, because the idea of being married is, you know, being a married couple, your goal is to get each other to heaven. And True. so you need to build each other and grow with each other and push each other to grow. Mm-hmm. All right. And one of the most, what are the most challenging things? Oh, we said just being human because we're all imperfect and we all have bad days and, you know, allowing grace for each other when we have those bad days. Cause I get snippy, he gets snippy and, you know, it's just, yeah. you know, allowing, not letting it turn into a fight or tear you down, but saying, Hey, we're human. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Anything else there, John? Uh, no, that's good. We can, we can move on to the next one. Right. Yeah. I know it's uh Sometimes uh, having that best friend in the world relationship and partner to salvation, uh, you you have to make sure you don't take that person for granted ever. And Mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, your expectations for each other are so great that uh, sometimes you forget to say, thank you so much for going on this journey with me. It's, uh, It's amazing. So. We definitely thank each other a lot for yeah. like helping each other out and being there for each other. We're like, man, I don't know how I'd do this without you. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's good. But we also, you know, I'm a note that I made. Um, it's important that you choose to love each other because yeah. it's, it's an everyday, it's a choice to love each other and to build each other up and to be there for each other for everything. Mm-hmm. Right. So is there anything different uh, being married than what you expected it to be? Um, my, my expectations, I mean, I'm not going to say like I, I had it figured out, but um, I grew up, my mom and dad were married um, Catholic. I was raised Catholic and um, they had a really good, they still do have a great relationship and um, really gave a good example on how to be um at least that's how i remember it and um so i feel like i'm pretty much my dad now <laughs> I, I emulate my dad and I, he did a good job and my mom did a good job too so you know gender reminds me of my mom and, and the way she raises kids and and everything so to me it's it seems to be working out pretty good <laughs> that's great So for me, expectations were different because I grew up in a household where I didn't have a great example. My parents were married, but it was a very volatile relationship and it wasn't a great example of like a a stable Christian marriage. And then I, of course, got married very young um, and that relationship wasn't anything like what mine and John's relationship was. So I'll, I thought oh, things can only go up from here. <laughs> so um, my expectations were it's, it's way better than I ever could have expected anything to be because it's, it's real. It's right. You know, this is, I, I jokingly say, I saw it somewhere and I jokingly have used this quote that I say, like, I picked my first husband, God picked my second husband. Well, that's really nice. That's great. Um, and you don't think that uh, John needs the, any sessions with uh, Dr. Rick from the Progressive Commercials on how not to turn into your parents? Yeah. <laughs> no. He has just the, the right amount of that in him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his, his parents are truthfully, honestly, an exemplary model of a Christian household, a Christian couple, parents, grandparents, like they are awesome. So. Mm. 
Right. That's very important. And all week, the speakers have been talking about the wonderful, wonderful foundation they got uh, at home growing up. So uh, what role exactly does God play in your marriage? Well, I think it's very important to point out the fact that like us getting married was one of the things that God brought me to the Catholic church. Like that's hugely important, um, you know, and it didn't happen overnight. It was years and it was years of when, you know, we, when we got married, I was a Christian, but I was like non-denominational and, you know, it was important for me, you know, there's amplified church across the street from Our Lady of Joy. And like, I, I thought about it, I prayed on it and I was like, should, you know, John go to Catholic church and me and my two older children go to this church. And then I was like, no, like it's, it's important for us to go. It doesn't matter what religion we are. It's important for us to be together as a family learning about God together. Mm -hmm. So like, that's what started that. And then just over the years, you know, we went to mass and, and I learned about things. My brother-in-law is a priest. John's brother is a priest. So like, I would talk to him. I would talk to John. I would talk to like my mother-in-law and like, just learned about the Catholic faith. And then just one day, like, I literally felt God calling me to the Catholic church. And that's when I decided to like, get serious about, um, I got an annulment for my first marriage, which was a very, very painful process. Um, Deacon Joe was actually my advocate for that. And he was, he made it, he made it as easy as it could have been. Um, so it was definitely that was a process, but then, you know, I went through RCA and I learned so much and I grew so much my faith. So like, that is like really where we come to now with, you know, God has always played a role in our marriage and our family, but like, it's just brought us even closer together with me becoming Catholic and then us getting married in the Catholic church. Um, and we, uh, you know, and it's helped me to, uh, you know, Jen going through RCIA, um, and I, I would go to a few of those um, classes at night. And it it was really good just, you know, when you're young and you're in CCD, you don't really realize like what you're getting. And then to be able to go back as an adult and uh, get a little bit more in depth with it, it was uh, with, with our faith. It was, um, I liked it. It was good. It was a good refresher, it, like brings you back. Um, and, uh, you know, Jen and I pray together. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple, I mean, you, you have your rough patches too. And, um, like there was a couple, for a couple of years there, work was kind of scarce and, um, you know, you're not sure how you're going to make it through the week and somehow something comes up and John can go to work for the weekend and the mortgage gets paid again. <laughs> And that didn't happen <laughs> like, just once realizing... that happened multiple times where it's somebody's looking out for you and it's, you know, it's God, yeah. he's, you know, taking care of you. And Rec recognizing his hand in things and being grateful to him and thanking him yeah. when, you know, we reckon when we're like, man, <laughs> yeah, he like, he really like just recognizing that as a couple together and being able to talk about that as a couple together yeah. is, I think is very important. Great. Um, <clears throat> before I ask you about the effect of the children on the marriage, two things, I wanted to make a comment. Last night, Allison um, made a comment that be, being a CCD teacher, she had to go back and make sure she understood everything from grade school that she learned. And John, you saying about going to RCIA, it kind of got you in tune with the stuff that as a child you had learned. And mm -hmm. it's always good to have a refresher how, no matter how it comes. But the other thing was, I think you said that you have a brother who is a priest. Is he in the uh, Pittsburgh Diocese? He's at the uh, Oratory down in um, okay. Oakland. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. I think uh, Deacon Frank and uh, our, our daughter and his daughters uh, all went to the uh, Oratory down there. In, oh, nice. uh, on the campus in Oakland. So that's great. Um, I'm going to have to ask my uh, daughter if she uh, knows your uh, brother. Yeah. He's, he's, so, done a, he's done um, guest mass at Our Lady of Joy, Father Paul Worley. 
is his name. He's one that married us too. In the yeah, Catholic he, Church. which was super cool. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's always nice to have a connection there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're getting to the point about uh, what what impact do the children have on a marriage? Um, it has brought us closer for sure, because, um, it takes a lot of work and trust for each other. You know, one, I mean, we've, we've talked extensively, but I mean, I had two kids coming into this. Mm -hmm. So John, you know, stepped into that dad role. Um, it was so natural for him. And I think, again, that goes to his, his dad you know, and his parents that it was just, so with my two older children who, and you know, and it's just become over the years that there's no steps, there's no halves. We're just family, you know, he like to hear him talk about all three of our kids, the pride and his, you know, in his voice and, it, and both of us, like we're both super proud of all of our kids. Like I said, it's brought us closer. Um, it makes you pray more. Yeah, <laughs> no not, just, uh, not just for your, you know, you obviously you're going to pray for your children, but um, you got to pray for each other, um, for each other's sanity. <laughs> sometimes, I mean, kids are a lot of work and, um, and you need the, and you need God there to, you know, set your sail right when you're, when you're raising kids, because it's, it's definitely a task, very, you know, super rewarding, obviously, if anybody you know, ever has kids, but uh, you definitely have to have a, an open line to, to God for raising children. Well, amen to that. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. All right. Um, <clears throat> I think we're going to, we're ready to move on to uh, questions from the uh, Zoom attendees here today. Uh, and as always, they can unmute themselves and ask you a question directly, or they can type it into chat and I'll read it to you. So, uh, you guys can go ahead and submit questions or ask them directly. And um, I guess I'm gonna have to talk to you a little bit longer here while somebody's coming in right now, finally. Um, so is there uh, anything else that you'd like to share with us about the married life before we hit these questions? It's a good time. It's worth it. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's great. I mean, it's... It takes a lot of work um, and it definitely has challenges, but you know, all, all things that are, are great take work and there's challenges to it. Yeah. So um, it's a day in and day out thing. And um, we have a lot of fun though. We do have a lot of fun. That's good. <laughs> you definitely need a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. All right. So the first question comes in from Faith. And she wants to know, what church in our parish do you guys attend? Um, well, we're like officially members at Our Lady of Joy, but we usually go to Mass at either Our Lady of Joy or St. John's. Yeah. Okay. All Depends right. on what time we want to try to get everybody out of the house by. Yeah. Eight or nine. <laughs> Eight o'clock in Our Lady of Joy can be, can be a challenge. challenge. And, <laughs> and we live two minutes from the church also, but there's three kids that got to get out of the house. So. <laughs> Sometimes at St. John's it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, Abigail asks, is it hard to have a marriage and support God? No. No, I think it would be hard to have a marriage and not support God. Without or, God. Yeah, without yeah. God. I mean, yeah. they go like, uh, I guess they go hand in hand. I mean, you have to. you you have to have god to have the marriage i mean you you really do right uh, i i i agree with you it uh it wouldn't make sense otherwise um while we're waiting for more questions i, I guess i'll uh keep talking too um some advice that uh we got when we first had children and i'm not sure how old your oldest is yet but uh we were reminded to pray for our children's future spouses. And it's an interesting concept that you're praying, not only that they find the right person, but you're already praying for that person who's gonna be coming into your family at a later time. So keep that in mind. Yeah, no, well, that's good. To throw that out there, our kids are, so our oldest daughter, Jade, is gonna be 16 in April. Um, 
River, our son, is going to be, he just turned 13 in October, and Joanna, our youngest, and she is ours together, our biological child together. Um, she is seven. Wow. Okay. So we're busy. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> Learning to different schools. So uh, I'm sure there yeah. are other questions out there. Uh, we'd love to see you folks submit them. All right, here we go. Noreen, uh, she starts with a comment. You're a lovely couple. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. If you keep God first, your marriage will be full of joy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And that's true. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, even, even, you know, little things, um, you know, on the way home from mass, you know, Jen and I always get into good, you know, discussions okay. and debates about the homily. And it's just like, you know, and we'll talk about that for a while, even after we get home. And it's just, it's good to talk, you know, how she, how she like read, uh, heard the homily, homily of the gospel and then how I did. And then we talk about it and it's, it's good because you're, you bring God home too. You're not just going to church and coming home and going on to do your thing. You're, you're, you're keeping that, that fresh in your mind and uh, it, it makes for great conversation. Mm -hmm. Any big plans for uh, Valentine's day? No, this is the highlight of our, of our <laughs> weekend. <laughs> We're not doing anything. Uh, we're so sorry we, we, we are kid free so we're we're gonna enjoy some peace and quiet yeah oh good the kids are at my dad's for the weekend so we are just gonna enjoy like the peace and quiet in the house and the slowing down for a couple of days yeah. no big we we typically don't do anything for valentine's day um we both work full-time and with the kids we like i normally will cook a nice dinner for for our whole family and that's like our valentine's tradition but this year they just happen to be at my dad's they'll be home on sunday so we'll probably do a nice dinner but yeah that's all i cook for everybody kind of relax this weekend as yes. best we can <laughs> uh deacon frank wants to uh or says it's it's great to hear that god is the center of your marriage and now I just realized he sent this to me privately. So I, I guess I was <laughs> supposed to reveal his identity to the mouth. <laughs> but anyway, he says, it's great to hear that God is the center of your marriage. How would you encourage families to be involved in faith with their children? How do you involve your children in their faith development? Uh, we pray together. I mean, I think an important thing as a married couple and as a family, like one thing that a lot of people are lacking these days is everybody's, you know, glued to a screen and nobody takes time to like sit down with their family. And that's one thing that we do every night is we sit down with our kids and have dinner and we pray over our meal. And I think that's, and we talk about our day. And I think that is important um, to pray with your kids, you know, to show them. Another thing that I think that parents don't do enough uh, that we do and our kids are like, eh, it was like we love each other in front of them yeah. you know like we kiss each other we hug each other we're affectionate and we also will argue in front of them parents like to argue behind closed doors but if if we are snippy or bickering about something because everybody does um we let them see that but we also let them see us resolve it and i think that's also important to like let kids witness that you're not going to have a perfect relationship with everybody all the time there's conflict there's going to be conflict, but it's important that you can resolve it as a couple, you know, and, and like I said, we let them see us love each other and we pray with them and we involve them. I mean, we do, there, there are two of them are in CCD. One's been confirmed. So we do, you know, the different, I see a question. You guys have been married for nine, years. not quite like eight and a half years we've been married for. Yeah. We'll be married for nine years this August. Okay. So, but yeah, so it's just with our kids, it's just keeping them involved, you know, trying to get to mass as often as possible. Um, at the beginning of COVID, when the church opened back up, like I, it was very important for at least for me to get to mass as like a new Catholic, like I just wanted to be in church, but we weren't quite comfortable taking the kids yet. I wanted to just kind of feel it out, see how it was. But now we're back to like, we register and we just take everybody. Yeah. Um, so that's another important thing. I think it's taking your kids to go to church, whether they want to go or not. <laughs> Well, that's, that, that's great thanks um one of the messages that you had 
was echoed every night this week, and that was the importance of prayer. And if the people watching it, if nothing else, hopefully they know the importance of your prayer life and uh, that relationship with God. And uh, it's amazing uh, the power of God and things that uh, happen when you remember to pray and keep that structured in your life. And supporting each other's prayer life too, you know, like I did when I was um, in RCA this spring after COVID hit, I did, what was it, a 54. 54 day rosary with another person in my RCA class. And John, like he encouraged me every day. He's like, oh, you got, you got to say your rosary. And he would make sure the kids were, you know, out of my way, leaving me alone and let me do my novenas and everything. And it was, that was like, you know, like that was him supporting me to be able to do that, to have my meditation time and my prayer time. And it's the same with him. Like, you know, if it's like, if he needs his time to, you know, pray about something or work on something, like I'm like, Hey, let's leave dad alone. Like let's, you know, I think that's really important too. Right. And not only praying to ask for things, but, uh, prayers of thanksgiving also mm -hmm. thanking god for that's, all that provides. usually that's that's the majority of it is the yeah being thankful for everything you do have yeah you know because you have everything god wants you to have you know you just have to realize that you can make it with what he's given you and, and be thankful for it and being thankful and making sure we pray and thanksgiving for things that also brings you joy mm -hmm. all right thank you so much uh awesome. we're winding down here on the last night uh it's been a privilege and honor to be here every night with you folks. Um, Jen, would you like to lead the closing prayer? Of course. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Holy God, if it is your will that I be married someday, watch over my future spouse, protect my spouse from harm, keep my spouse chaste and pure as I promise the same, lead us to each other and instruct us in the ways of friendship, as our love grows, let it be in your name. I commit, I commend this prayer through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and our mother and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And that was the prayer for future married life. I'm sorry I didn't say that at the beginning. <laughs>